Here we go. Monique, a relica in the building! Give me a hell yeah! I'm here! I made it! Oh yes! Dude, welcome back. We appreciate you coming back on the show. Life has looking like it's going pretty, pretty damn well for you lately. How is life? Thank you. It's great. Yeah, I mean, busy, extremely busy, as you can probably see and tell from the chaos. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's really, really incredible. Like, I can't believe we're coming to the end of this year. And, you know, naturally in December, we start to like, we start to think back a little bit, you know, on the year that we've had and the experiences that we've shared with, with our network and stuff. And, oh my gosh, I just... Yeah, I, I I made a post yesterday that said something along the lines of like, this year we've we we've we've had some experiences that we can we only once ever thought would exist in our dreams. So, and I know it sounds super sappy and cheesy, but it's true, and it's just it's just awesome. Um, I'm really really happy with how everything's going this year. It is a case of busting ass, you get rewarded. It's exactly what it is. And you guys have been doing just that. Uh, what is it like to headline your own tour? So I know you guys have frequently oh. toured a lot, opening for others, but now you're you're with what, Loon and Heartline right now, correct? That's right, that's exactly right. We start on Friday uh, in our hometown, Sydney, and then, you know, we go around from there. Um, it's, yeah, it's really cool. I think that, I think it's pretty much the perfect way to close out what this year has been, right? Because like you said, yeah, we've 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 played the open slot for a whole bunch of bands that we have admired for so long. You know, we did Monolith Festival with Carnival, we did Full Tilt Festival with North Lane, Void of Vision, we did it we did two shows with North Lane, Silent Planet, all of those incredible bands. Wow. Um Thy Art is Murder, oh my gosh. But basically to finish the year um, this is going to be a really cool test of like how those shows have sort of built us up and sort of what that's going to mean for our audience, not just the audience of the bands that we've supported, but like who's here for us. So we're trying to make sure that our expectations are not too high and, you know, cause we've, we've you know, we've played packed out rooms all year and we're not like, those aren't our crowds, you know? So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. It's going really well so far. Um, we've we've got a really good set list in store. So uh, I'm yeah, I'm really really excited. But I'm just making sure that the, like I'm treating it as what it is, which is like a bit of a test, bit of a, a diagnosis of where we're at right now, what it means for next year, what kind of audience we have in each city. It's gonna be great. When when you guys perform safety on this upcoming tour, are you always gonna have a fill-in spot for the, the streaming section via someone from Heartline or Loon, or is somebody in Relica gonna do the vocals? On this tour, we do have it planned. Um, yeah, like thrown around around the different tour, um, like members of the touring party. Um, but I've actually recently been just doing it myself um, because naturally it's, it's, it's a pretty big ask to get someone on each show we're doing to, you know, learn the part and jump up for it and stuff. So, uh, and I mean, it's not like we have the luxury of having Sean with us every time he's touring the States right now, naturally, like make them suffer going absolutely insane um, on the tour with Bad Omens. But um, I've, yeah, like I've been doing it myself because um, yeah, I've, I've done that in the past with other parts, just sort of adapted them to fit my voice and, that's, that's gone pretty well too. So we've always got an option, whether we've got someone to jump up on stage to do it or whether it's gonna be me, we've always got something cool to deliver. <laughs> I think, Monique, the last time we talked, I Don't Know What I Am was was about to come out and we didn't get a chance to ask yep. you why you titled it that. It's such a great question. Um, I think that it pretty much captures exactly where the lyrics are and where we are at musically and just personally as people. Um, because 
over the last year or two, or actually a little bit longer than that, over the last three years or so, we've the the continual feedback that we've gotten when it comes to the music that we put out and stuff, like we've had some such amazing feedback from people, which is incredible. Um, but it always comes back to this key theme of like, like, what are you? What are you guys? Like, what genre is this? You know, like, is it, um, like, is it heavy? Is it alternative? Is it metalcore? Is it prog? Like, you know, I think that there is a little bit of genre bending in there, whether it be intentional or not. You know, we don't necessarily intentionally set out to create genre bending music, but that's just where our heads line up. And that's the, that's what ends up happening in the writing room. But I think we sort of wanted to honor that in the music that we wrote going forward. Um, just a little bit of a, because this was going to be um, one of the bigger projects that like, well, naturally, like as our band progresses, this is the biggest project we've put out so far. And it, it it's very identity building. I think because this year um, we've built a lot of our identity and people are starting to, you know, oh, that's Relica, that's what they sound like sort of thing. And that idea of like, what is that? Question mark, question mark, question mark is like, that is at the very core of it. And I think in a personal way, it's also just me figuring out who I am in the world and where I sit and where I fit here. And, you know, cause we're, we're all pretty young. We're all like in our early twenties and still, you know, figuring out this great big world and stuff. So yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a homage to this, not taking ourselves too seriously, not trying to put ourselves in a box at this stage, but really trying to hone in on what other people see in us and what we see in ourselves. I gotcha. Uh, my co-host today is Michaela because it's a uh, Michaela Mondays. Yes, hi. I'm so sorry. I didn't say hello before. Hello. <laughs> Michaela, you. What, what question or two do you have for Monique before we play uh, a Relica song? So what have you guys been listening to, like, in your free time that's been inspiring, like, this genre bending? Like, give us an idea of, like, what bands you guys are into. Oh, my gosh, such a great question. Well, I mean, naturally, it changes all the time. And every time I get this question, I suddenly forget every single artist that ever existed <laughs> on it. Right. But I will do my best for you. Um, yes. Okay, well, we all four of us listen to such different like like i swear none of us have the same music taste i mean there is there are crossovers like um we all love polyphia um nice. i love system of a down i i'm yes. always listening to like like spotify wrapped came out recently which makes this a lot easier i'm thinking about who's in my spotify wrapped system of a down uh spirit box um like obviously because <laughs> they're fucking spirit box they're awesome um <laughs> I, our drummer, Ben, listens to a fair bit of grime, you know, like, like UK rap. Okay. Um, not saying that okay. that necessarily causes our music, but he loves it. Yes. Um, what is, what oh is, uh, what does Shannon listen to? Um, we've actually got a new drummer. Our drummer oh, ben. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I thought, I thought Shannon was still your drummer. That's I'm sorry. Okay. He's the one that had like the long yeah, bangs right. in the Mr. Uh, Mr. Magic video, right? Oh yeah, that's that's Shannon, but okay, he's okay. not he's not in our band anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, Ben is our new drummer. He's he's awesome. He's incredible. Also, love Shannon. Like, adore him. Do not like. Yeah, he's. So it was it was he a just, mutual just, good good positive split. It was, yeah, we we everything's great. Everything is okay. Awesome. But awesome. um, yeah. So Ben is Miles's brother. Miles is our bassist. As like, and he's he's been our bassist forever. Ben is Miles's brother. He's absolutely killing it. Um, he's he's even younger than we are. He's 21, um, and he's just so bright and just eager. He, he's extremely eager, and um, yeah, when it comes to music taste, yeah, he he brings a lot of the sort of more hip hop element to it, and I think a lot of drummers are like that actually. Um, Definitely, a lot of drummers love the, the rhythm behind hip hop, so I think that that's that makes a lot of sense. Um, Miles listens to literally everything. I can't even put a name on it. I don't know. He he loves um. Oh, they toured Australia recently. Um, with Wind Waker, BG. Would you know this? Um, they were just here. And, I and they toured with them. they toured with Wind Waker. They toured with Wind Waker. Enter Shikari. 
Oh, 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 okay. Was that was that Will or was that Liam uh, on vocals for Windmaker? That was with Liam. With Liam? Yeah, that was with Liam. Okay. Yeah, Hell yeah. It's really recent. It was like two weeks ago. Um, and Brandon is just metalcore central, deathcore, metalcore, <laughs> all your fours. Um, that's where we get our more. Um, yeah, that's where we get our heavier aspects, I guess. Um, Brandon, our guitarist, is is really into the heavier stuff. Um, the more like streamlined, quote mainstream metalcore sort of roots. Um, a lot of your Alpha Wolf and stuff like that. When are we coming to the states? Please, but I please say a good soon. No, definitely. There's what, when are, all genres. <laughs> is there? Maybe it's not been announced yet, but is there plans in 2023 to come to the states? Um, I. Yes, I'm sorry. I have nothing for you. <laughs> Damn but it. just trust. This year, the, the only thing I can <laughs> the only thing is that um, this year has brought us a lot closer to that being a reality. Excellent. Um, you know, like we've had a lot more of a um, an outreach from the states. You know, you guys have helped so much. You know, having our network over there is incredible. Um, touring with Silent Planet made that a, like a lot more of a reality as well because those guys are from where you are. Or are they? They're not Canadian, are they? No, 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 no. Y yeah, they're from California. Yes. Um, ah, yes. I'm I'm so bad at geography, but it's it's definitely something that we are working actively towards now. It's not just a dream. It could happen. I don't have anything for you more. If you need that. any help whatsoever, <laughs> uh, we don't have a, the most power in the world, but we will use whatever power we have to make it happen if needed. Uh, I do want to play safety. So for those that, that are watching that may not have ever heard your band before, we at least give them a little bit of a taste. Then we'll jump back in with a couple more questions. Great. If you're watching this, your life's about to change and you're going to run immediately to YouTube and Spotify. And hit that follow button! Your melodies, you have such good melody writing and how you could take like a, a, a sentence or two and just be like, just just go all over the place with it. I just, I just, I can't do it. But I, I just love that. How, how does a, thank you. How does, how does a Relica song start? Like just go to like, we're today's writing day, how does the song start from scratch for the band? It's actually funny that you ask because we've just changed. We, we, right now we're going through a really like sort of experimental form of writing for us. We originally, so when, when Safety was written and the whole IDK EP, um, it usually starts with Brandon, um, our guitarist, bringing a demo to the table. It might just be a verse. It might just be a chorus. It might even be like, a whole song, you know? Um, and then from there, it's usually collaborated with, um, Ben will add some like, rather than draft drums, he'll add proper drums. And then um, Miles might add some bass parts while I'm writing a melody just on my own sort of thing and, and lyrics. And then we'll bring all the ingredients together and then we'll just workshop it until it feels right. Um, but in saying that, we are trying something new at the moment where we're starting entirely from scratch in the same room together rather than sort of one bit at a time. So, And that's been really, really good for us lately. So you might hear something very different from us either next year or, you awesome. know, late next year or so. Cool. Uh, Michaela, another, yeah. another question for Monique if you have one. What has been your favorite show so far? I owe a hot sauce, by the way. Play. I was thinking about this um, because I was writing an article for another publication about like my year in review and they asked the same question. And I think it's a tie between three. Am I allowed to do that? I just yeah. simply oh, cannot yeah. choose because they are all amazing for different reasons. First one is, and I'll be specific with the dates. First one is the Perth date of um, Monolith Festival with Carnival, Ocean Grove, Cog, um, Pliny, etc. That was just magical. Um, our first time playing in Perth over the other side of Australia, it was incredible. Um, 
second one is the Newcastle day of Silent Planet. Like when we when we did a few shows with Silent Planet, that was again just magical. Um, everyone just had really good energy, very respectful. Um, but everyone just went absolutely off, and the room was full, like completely packed. It was so cool. And then the final one would probably be um, we have a venue over here in Sydney called Crowbar. And it's uh, like a really famous venue um, for heavy music. It is, it's just the best. And we celebrated their 10th birthday, like the, the venue's 10th birthday with North Lane and Wind Waker. And that was just yes. off charts. Everyone was there for such a good time. It was I'm surprised it's time. still standing with that kind of lineup. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh yeah. And they had, they had lineups like that all week. Like we played one day. And then uh, Ocean Grove headlined the next day. And then I think Trophy Eyes headlined the next day. It was just, it was just a party. It was great. Wow. Uh, we know you're, you're a very, very busy woman. So we're only going to ask you a couple more and then we'll let you go. What is, now that you're about to do the next, the next mini run tour, give me two items in your suitcase that are, that we wouldn't expect to find in your suitcase. Oh, I am so predictable. <laughs> Okay, all right, right. Something maybe a little unexpected would be um, I always pack like a a pack of cards or like a like a board game. I'm I'm huge on like board games, card games, all that. They end up being the best thing that you never thought you needed mm -hmm. on tour. You just don't think about it until you're like sitting around you know, in the green room waiting for a show to happen or whatever or you you load it in and there's a couple more hours. Whip out the cards and it always ends up being the best. Like take, take everybody's so money real quick. <laughs> take everybody's gamble yeah, a little oh, bit. No. Well, I mean, I'm a terrible gambler, so I would I would not be packing it anymore if it was gambling. <laughs> if there was any money on the and all of us are broke too, so that would be terrible. But um, yeah, so that's that's one. Um, and then. I don't know about unexpected. I always overpack. I, I'm such an overpacker. I always have way more outfits than I think I'll need. And I wear the same one every night because it's the foolproof one. And, you know, um, but otherwise, yeah, I'll always bring tea and honey because, again, that's basic vocalist things. Um, yeah, I'm so predictable. But I think that the cards is, is one that, you can you can take that one to the bank. It'll be good to have. Trust me. My final question for you, uh, <laughs> Monique. This is good answers. Is uh, what what is on your Relica must accomplish this in twenty twenty three list? Ooh. Mm. Band goals you've set for yourself in twenty twenty three. I I would love to. And, and I'm not going to be devastated if we don't do this because I know there's a lot more to it than than just just words. I would love to at least announce or even just in the back end concrete plans for um, international, uh, whether that be Europe or US. Um, I would love to have that locked down, uh, whether it be for 2024 or late 2023. I don't know. I don't. I don't mind. It's gonna happen. Just, I would love to have that be. That feels like a really good like next step, you know. Um, apart from that, I would love to be able to do an maybe another headline run, um, but see it grow from the one that we're about to do. Um, the rooms get bigger. The ticket sales get more full on. I think that that's kind of um, just one that signifies our growth a bit. But I think that I think that the best answer would probably be let's have something sold at lockdown for for overseas, and then I'll be in your DMs and I'll tell you all about it. Yes, please do. On, on the run, <laughs> going on with with Loon and Heartline, is there going to be locals opening before Heartline? Yes. Do you have a hand that's in right. deciding those locals? Sure, we did. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, our booking agent Jaden, yeah, of course. Our booking agent Jaden was very uh, was great with it as well. Like you know, he he suggested a whole bunch of bands, and we ended up sort of looking through their music and thinking, oh yeah, this is um this is sick. This will fit really well. It was a big part of it came down to the fit as well because Loon and Relica are two 
quite different bands in style, you know. Um, Luna, just basically your deathcore, metalcore, like, bros, like, punch each other in the pit sort of style. Yeah, for and sure. we're a little bit more experimental and prog, so we wanted to make sure we bridged the gap a little bit. And obviously, Heartline, you've got just, like, metalcore straight down the centre, really tight. Um so, yeah, I think the bands that we picked, yeah, we, we definitely had a part in it and um, we're really happy with the choices we made. Hell yeah. Well, Monique. And you can uh, check those out on our socials. Okay, cool. I, I'm, ex I'm excited <laughs> for you. The band has grown tenfold since the last time we have talked to you. I mean, substantially. So we're so happy for you. That all the so All the hard work is paying off. Hopefully we can revisit this maybe sometime around this time next year. And you're literally on tour you know, with uh, with like Metallica or somebody. I don't know where you'll be at that point, but so <laughs> something ginormous, okay. I imagine. But uh, Monique, thank you for your time. <laughs> Stay safe on the road and just don't change thank anything. You. Keep the formula the way it's working because it is totally working. Of course. Thank you so much, BG. And thank you, Michaela. Great it's to meet you. It is thank our pleasure. Monique for coming out. of... Relica! Yeah, hell yeah. Have a great day. Thank you.